When famine struck Bethlehem in Judea, a family left the land they owned there and traveled south in search of a new life. The journey itself was not without risks for Elimelech, his wife Naomi, and their two sons. Famine had forced them away, but Judea was all they had known. Anywhere else would be foreign. Moab was a country often at war with their own, but when Elimelech saw the fertile plains, he decided they would settle there. Elimelech, Naomi and their sons were content with their new life. They worked hard and they prospered. Then a sudden illness struck down Elimelech, and he died. <laughs> Naomi's sons cared for and comforted her in her distress. But then, later, their decisions to marry brought her great joy. Her sons had chosen two Moabite girls, Orpah and Ruth. For Naomi, the marriages meant the chance of children and the continuation of her husband's family name. But within months of their marriages, both sons died, and with them, Naomi's hopes for a family vanished. I must return to Bethlehem. Why? But why, Naomi? God's hand is against me. Our family name ended here in Moab. We're coming with you. Yes. It's far too dangerous for a woman alone. <laughs> but what more can I suffer? I've lost everything. You still have us? You must stay here with your people. You're still young. You can marry again. I have no more sons to offer you. We'll never forget you. May God reward you. Your love for my sons was great. And even now, you honor them with your love for me. <gasps> Follow your sister, Ruth. Go back to your mother. No. You are my mother now. Where you go, I will go. And where you live, I will live. Your people will be my people. And your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there will I be buried. So the two of them journeyed for days through the wilderness 
until they came to Bethlehem, where the rains had returned and a spring harvest was once again anticipated. Naomi? Whatever's happened to you? <laughs> so sad. Where's your husband? Your sons? Oh, can the earth give up its dead? God have mercy. All dead. Don't speak of mercy. Speak of sorrow, because God has dealt so bitterly with me. She is all I have. Ruth, wife of my eldest son. <laughs> she is my only family now. The poor girl left Moab for this. Oh, Naomi, you can't live here. Where should I live but in my own home? Yes, and this is my home too. I'm going to the fields. Why? They're harvesting. I can join the women gleaners. Scavenging with the poor? Oh, my child. We are poor. But the men who are harvesting, they could take advantage of you. I'll be careful. You're such a stubborn child. A daughter should listen to her mother. A daughter should work so her mother can eat. Ah. <sighs> Perhaps you know best after all. May the Lord God keep you safe. Hey, where are you going? Moab's that way. But I could show you a shortcut. <laughs> <laughs> What's she want? She's come to steal our barley. No. She's come to beg. She's asking to glean. Get back to work! Please. If not for my sake, for my mother-in-law, Naomi. <laughs> I beg you. So, you're the Moabite woman that came back with Naomi? Yes. What brings you here? Her land lies over there. That land lies barren. Please, let me glean here. I can't give you permission. This field belongs to Boaz. Then let me glean till he arrives. Believe me, I'll not keep a single grain without his consent. All right. But keep well back from the others. They won't want you joining them. There's little enough to glean as it is. The Lord God bless you. The Lord be with you. The Lord, the Lord bless, bless you. Bless you. Master, a word with you. The Moabite woman who came with Naomi. I said she could glean until you arrived. She'll not keep a grain without your consent. She's a hard worker. She hasn't stopped all morning. She's been no trouble. What? 
Here, you must be thirsty. My lord, why do you show me such kindness? Because I have heard all that you've done for Naomi. You deserve a rich reward. All I can do is give you permission to glean wherever you like. You are most generous. Ruth, work only on my land so that I can make sure that no man molests you. Come now, don't be alarmed. You can join us while we eat. Take some ears from the piles of grain and drop them in our pot. I've been so worried. Oh, oh, Ruth. <laughs> and there's more. He let me share their meal, and I've saved some for you. He let? Who let you? His name is Boaz. Of all the fields. And he said I could glean for the whole harvest. The Lord God guided you to Boaz. Boaz is a kinsman of ours, a relation. May the Lord God bless him for his kindness. Ruth worked on Boaz's land throughout the hot summer months. First the barley harvest, and then the wheat harvest. Boaz admired Ruth and the way she worked tirelessly for her mother-in-law. And Naomi, for her part, planned to secure Ruth's happiness by finding her a good husband. They've begun the celebrations. Yes, the harvest is over. And now we must think of the future. Our stores are overflowing, but they will not last forever. I'll find other work. I can weave. You won't find another master as generous as Boaz. No, I'll miss working on his land. Will you? There's another good breeze tonight. Boaz will be winnowing past nightfall again, so he'll eat and sleep at the threshing floor. Ruth, you must speak with him tonight, alone. Why? He is from our clan. Ruth, if you would only ask him, I know he'd honor his duty by marrying you. Marry me? A foreigner? And a widow? If you would have a child together, 
Our family line would be restored. Tell me what I must do. First, we must prepare you. No one else must see you together. Wait until everyone's asleep, then go and lie near him. Uncover his feet. He'll wake later with the cold, and when he does, he will tell you what to do. I will do what you ask. Who are you? Ruth, my lord. Spread the corner of your garment over me, for you are my next of kin. May God reward you. Such a sacrifice for Naomi's sake is great indeed. You have already earned the respect of many. You could have married for love. But... yes. I am not free to marry you. Oh. There is another kinsman closer in line. He must renounce his claim before I can do what you ask. But we must wait till the morning. No one must know you've been here. You cannot go back to Naomi empty-handed. Reassure her that the matter will be settled with honor. Whatever the outcome, you will have a husband today. Insisted I brought you this, but why didn't you tell me we had another kinsman closer in line? There is no kinsman more worthy than Boaz. He is a man of great honor. Then take heart, my daughter. Boaz is as wise as he is good. He will not let another man make you his bride. My friend. We have something to discuss. We'll need witnesses. Is it a matter of law? Family law. You are of Elimelech's clan, as am I. His widow Naomi has put her land up for sale. 
If you wish to buy the land and honour the obligations that accompany it, tell us now. If you do not, I myself will buy it since I am next in line after you. Boaz, I will buy it. <gasps> and you also recognise that on the day you buy the land, you also buy Ruth, the widow of Elimelech's elder son. You must do this in order to revive the family name. Ah. Be careful. She's young, so they'll be children, and they'll have first claim on the land. And on your other property, no doubt. Then uh, I cannot. Boaz, take my right yourself. Before the elders here, I recognize your right to walk upon our kinswoman's land. You are witnesses that I now buy from the hand of Naomi everything which belonged to Elimelech. Also, Ruth the Moabite, I take as my wife. Oh. We, we are, are witnesses. witnesses. <laughs> Before long, Naomi's heartfelt wish for a grandchild was fulfilled. Law loves you. She's worth more than seven sons. What joy the child will bring you in your old age. May the Lord God bless him. Call the child Obed. Obed, the servant of the Lord. Obed became the father of Jesse, and Jesse became the father of David. And David became the king of Israel.